Welcome to Das Geek. So this video is going to be really quick, but what I want to do is there are a couple of people who've asked me for help with their Scarlett 2i2 with a specific issue related to static in the headphones when you're opening multiple applications that grab audio. So an example of this is, let's say you're playing a game, it's going to grab audio, then you open OBS, it's going to grab audio. And then what happens is you start hearing static in your headphones. Now, one way to fix this is to switch from pulse to jack. And a lot of it has to do with Jack being able to handle the sample rates of USB interfaces better than standard Pulse. Pulse is fantastic for, you know, regular microphone, headphone situation. But once you start adding in professional audio equipment, it really starts lacking here. In my case, Pulse is just easier to utilize. Jack can be a little bit of a pain to set up, although the Ubuntu Studio team is doing some work there to make that easier for people in the future. We have to wait for that for Ubuntu 19.04 if that comes out. But this is a simple fix that I found. And a lot of it is thanks to Arch in the Arch Wiki, the Arch community that put this together, at least in part. So one of the things, the big differences is, you know, Pulse kind of does a standard 48,000, I think, or 44,000 uh, sample rate for equipment, which works great for most of your generic equipment. But once you get a USB interface in there, that can handle 96,000 or 192,000. That's where it doesn't really know what it's doing and it starts to show some issues. So this is the Arch Wiki and I'll have this link in the video below of where I found part of the solution to this, this issue here. And one of the things that you do is you run, uh, not that command, this command here in your terminal, which I will get set up here. And if we look for my specific audio interface that I'm trying to fix here, the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, then you can see some of my settings right here. And you're going to do some math if you follow along with this. Let's say you don't have the Scarlett, you have the Behringer Euphoria. You can follow along here and they're going to have you do some quick math to calculate um, what the buffer size and fragment buffering fragment size is that you should utilize for your equipment based on what it displays here. Now I've already updated and changed mine, so the math here wouldn't make sense for me to go through, but just go to that link, follow their steps here. You're gonna do some basic math to figure out based on the numbers that you get by typing in that command for the interface you wanna use. In this case, it's the Scarlett 2i2 so that you can change these figures here. And then what you're gonna do is open up your favorite editor, whether it is Vim or Nano. And for most people, they prefer Nano here. And you're going to type in nano slash Etsy slash Paul slash Damon dot conf. And I didn't know this existed. Now, I'm not, as you guys know, um, I've only been in Linux for about three years, but I'd never heard anybody talk about going in here and configuring this before. I'm sure it's been around forever and some of you know about it, but I didn't. And this is an area where you can actually go change a lot of default settings for Pulse. And you can see I've changed my default sample right here to 96,000. I've also ch changed my sample formatting and my alternate sample rate uh, and default sample channels, default fragments. And what happens is when you go into this, you're going to see a bunch of these. That code is not executing when it has that semicolon in front of it. When you remove that semicolon, then it's going to be executed. So make sure if you're following along with changing your default fragments, etc., that you remove that semicolon from in front of the items that you're changing. But to make this even easier for you, because there are a lot of things outside of that, as you can see here that I changed, and some of these were random forum posts from multiple people who had posted different configurations that they used for their Scarlet that I combined in all into one. And you can get that by going to the Dusky community page. You can click on tools. And here I have all of my different scripts and things that I have set up, but mostly a link to my GitHub page. And on here I have put together scarlet2i2daemon.conf. So a copy of my daemon.conf file that you can basically just take and cut and paste into yours. Make sure you back up yours first. And then you can come out here and take a look at mine and either copy some of the settings I have or just pull it down. Now this works specifically for the Scarlet. This will work in Arch, this will work in Ubuntu, uh, probably any other distro that utilizes uh, Pulse Audio and that has the daemon.conf set up. So I have tested this in Ubuntu and I have tested this in Arch, but you can try it in others and let me know if it works. 
but essentially you can just copy um, what I have here or just bring it down, uh, download the actual file itself and replace yours, but make sure you back up your original so you can install it. So what does this do? This basically sets the right parameters for your interface so that you stop getting that staticky noise. Now, the good news is if you're recording with that staticky noise, the actual system recordings don't pick that up, but you hear it and it's super obnoxious, super obnoxious. So it's just a great thing to finally be able to get rid of that without having to go through the configurations and stuff of installing Jack and utilizing Pulse Audio out of the box, which means that I could take this Scarlett 2i2 pretty easily bring it over to somebody's house or even on the road and configure it right through Pulse without having to go, okay, well, I need to install Jack and I need to set up Jack and do all this stuff to get people up and running. I could just go download my Daemon Conf file, move it into there, and now I'm portable with the Scarlet 2i2 as well. So that's my tip and trick. I hope this helps you. Thank you so much for all the support. You guys have been supporting me on Kofi, Coffee, however you want to pronounce it, KO-FI. If you go to the Das Geek channel, look at support there. Also, if you want Linux 91 swag, it's finally available. Thanks to the Ask Noah show. They hooked us up with a vendor that prints stuff way better than Teespring uh, quality out there. And you can get yourself a hat, uh, shirts, and things like that, and stickers out there. So go check that out as well. And until next time, get out there and fill your brains. It's, it's just fun. It's just fun.